a Discord server or Facebook group. Absolutely. Or, you know, like just like. There's way more out there nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Like the social media aspect, like the forums, Discord mm-hmm. and stuff like this. And, you know, places where you can actually connect with people who are like um, from the same planet as you are, you know, and it's so important. It really yeah. is because it's it, just being isolated and just having nothing but your own thoughts all day long is just, you know, doesn't work that well, at least not for long, you know. Yeah. There's yeah. like some part of it is actually good. You get you get to focus, you get to really like dive into things and not be so distracted and kind of like looking for that external validation that can actually be crippling at times because that's never going to be enough if you're looking for external validation from other people all of the time and you don't learn how to trust like your own intuition and Mm -hmm. yourself yeah yes right right so so a part of it is actually important to do things alone and take time for that but the community is invaluable it's just so priceless it's absolutely yeah it's it's amazing to have like this community to connect connect with yeah it's it's just that community of of other people i mean i feel like people at the beginning maybe are afraid of like other engineers like you know stepping on their turf or there's there's like the mindset of like mm-hmm. i'm forgetting the names of these mindsets i always forget this out on the on the air uh but there's like the, the mindset there, there's like the, the plentiful mindset where you you yeah, think of other people as lack, collaborators mindset of lack yeah, yeah of lacking guess, yeah. and um um, um, abundance, the bun- abundance mentality uh, of right, like, yeah, yeah, you know, other people are here to help and they're not necessarily your competitors. You're, you're, we're in this together right. and we can lift each other up as like a, as a community. A hundred percent. I never understood this, um, this notion of like, oh no, if I give too much away, then that's going to take away from me because how is that even possible? Two people can get the exact same session with the exact same tracks. Right. And get two entirely different mixes just because of how you listen to it and how your ear translates things and exactly. your taste is. And things can never be, you You could never take something away from me just by me saying like, hey, this is how I do something. Just because my ears are not yours. That's, that's you know, what it's all about. It's, it just doesn't make sense even to fi- me even too. physically right like your your actual yeah. eardrum your the whole like you know right. the, the canal yeah. is different yeah, yeah absolutely yeah it's completely unique your taste is unique your skill set is unique and the way that you interpret things the way that you listen to things your musical library in your brain is different so how can anyone ever take anything away from me personally you know it just right. doesn't make sense to me and that seems to be the secret for success is is to, you know, like do your thing and do it hard, you know, go all the way on what you love and how you interpret music yeah. and how you, you hear it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what so, people come to you for eventually. Exactly. Right. Like your, yeah. your, your portfolio is your, your resume sound, yeah. is your, mm-hmm. if, if people come to you because of your portfolio, then you're, in, you're in good, then you're, you're going to do, you're going to do well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Absolutely. This is why I um, I pay more attention to whether I like the music or not that I'm working on rather than whether someone has a name and a following. It's mm-hmm. because I need the music to really move me somehow because otherwise I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the mix if it doesn't intrigue me, it doesn't inspire me. Wow. Um, even if this person has a huge following, that's obviously that's great, but that's not the main, the most important thing about this whole thing. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, I love that. Uh, so can you can you dig a little deeper? So so when artists contact you with with music, um, you know, to mix, are you mm-hmm. are do you have like a whole like onboarding process? First of all, how do they find you? And second of all, yeah. how do you decide if this is an artist you want to work with? Yeah, so it isn't really that deep in terms of like <laughs> there's no auditioning process where I'm just like, play me your song. <laughs> and then <Yeah>. <laughs> I decide <laughs> whether I mix it or not. That's that's not the case. But like, um, I love to connect with people, especially when, you know, there's like a, I don't know, like a first communication, like email or Instagram DM. I get a lot of um, people through in- Instagram, actually. Um, and a lot of people who go through other people like, hey, this and this person told me to check you for for mixes and um one of the first things i do is just actually really check out who is this what kind of music do they make how does it sound does it um make me feel something or not like does it 
make me want to like the the best feeling that I can get from hearing a new artist that I don't know yet is like oh I really want to get my hands on this like if it's like um oh it could have been it could have like sounded like this if I hear like something that they've released like oh I would have done this to their vocal would have done like an effect there and stuff like that so if I get inspired then I know that's a good sign and mm -hmm. uh, and also just like trying to communicate with this person a little bit, seeing how they are to interact with. Um, are they open-minded? You know, are they like um, very, very professional and distant? Or are they kind of like friendly and, and open? If possible, I like to get on the phone and just have a conversation, uh, especially if we're going to do a full project and not just one single, like if it's an EP or an album. Mm -hmm. I like to get on the phone and just talk to them like, tell me about this project. What are we working on? Like, what are you looking for? And um, what inspired you during the process of making this album? And, you know, I like to, yeah, dig a little deeper and get to know them. And that's how I like to work with people. Yeah. So it sounds like you're very collaborative and you're, you're you kind of are trying to help them realize your vision, like, or their vision, rather than kind of impart your mm -hmm. own necessarily like as soon as yeah. you get the tracks. I think it's important, um, especially as a mix engineer, because you're there to support the song. You're there yeah. to really just like bring out what is hidden in the song and bring it out to, uh, yeah, in the best way. And, and the best way is always the way that makes the artist and the producer feel like this is what we wanted for this song. And it's not like what, I want it. And of course I have done that, you know, in recent or not recent in like years where I was working uh, on, on mixes and I wasn't really mixing for that long yet. And my approach was a little bit more of that of an artist, like, oh, this is a really cool song. How would I want this to sound? And um, I learned that actually for half of the time, it doesn't really work well to do it like that as a mix engineer because it's a it's a different hat that you're wearing. So along the way, as mm -hmm. I was working more and more on on mixes, I realized like this is the wrong approach actually, and it's not beneficial for them or for me because right. I actually have to go back and and regroup and you know maybe even restart and um, yeah. So I actually just kind of picked up on that like okay, if I were to get my song mixed as an artist, mm -hmm. how would I want this mix engineer to approach my, uh, I don't know, baby, I guess, you know, this yeah. is like, it's a, it's a huge thing for an artist and a producer actually to, to give away their song their in the stems, hands yeah. of someone else to really just, you know, bring out that vibe. So it's actually a really personal thing and kind of a delicate thing also. So I want to be respectful of that. And so my approach has, uh, has shifted along the years where now it's it's more of like um, just figuring out like what does the artist want? What does the producer want? What inspired them to make this song? What are some songs that they really love? And then kind of like combine that to bring out the best possible yeah. product. Hey everyone, it's 2022. If you still don't have a website for your studio, it's time to change that. Every single month, there are potential clients out there Googling your name, trying to find your portfolio, and deciding if you're the right choice for their music. If they can't find your portfolio, you miss out on the gig. The fastest way to get your first website up and running is by using EasyFunnels, the number one website builder for recording studios. Their templates are all made for the audio industry, so you can just load one of their pre-built designs, upload your portfolio, add your photos, and replace the text on the pages. You could probably have your website done in the time it takes you to listen to one episode of Secret Sonics. If you're finally trying to create your website ASAP, you can get 50% off your first three months of Easy Funnels by going to easyfunnels.io slash secretsonics. And there's a link in the show notes below, so go check it out. All right, back to the episode. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so all that being said, when you send off your first mix, in your mind, is it done or is it kind of like a direction? That's a great question, actually. Um, I get this question a lot, like, when do you know that you're done with the mix? Well, I mean, I guess these are due to two different questions, but to, to answer your question, like I sent I send a first draft when I feel pretty confident that I'm at least 80 percent where I would want to be. And then sometimes I send it off and I'll really just write a note like, hey, this is where I'm at right now. Can you give me some 
you know, some ideas or notes of like how it sounds to you, let me know. You know, sometimes it's really just very minor things that they're, they'll send back and then, you know, mix two can be the final mix. Or sometimes it's a little bit far off and they actually had a different approach in mind and then you can go up to like maybe mix six or something like that and then you get there. So actually it's very helpful to include the yeah. artist and producer in this process, especially if you're just starting out working yeah. together. I do I do the same thing. I, I feel like um because to get the first eighty percent, you know, the way can take like an hour or two. It doesn't necessarily take need to take like the whole like four to eight hours. And yeah. then you, you can kind of without working too hard, you can kind of get feedback and see if it's in the right direction. Yeah. Without going too yeah. far down the rabbit hole, and then doing all the automation right. moves yeah. and <laughs> yeah. tying your hands, the details and... exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I, I I work very similarly. I I I try to get about eighty percent of the way, and then and yeah. send it out and see is this the vibe? Because then if it's not the vibe, no big deal. Yeah, then you still have like a lot of time to just kind of like do things differently. You're you're not really so invested in how it sounds now, and actually it it's it's a smart thing to do also because once as a mixing engineer you're working on a song for hours and hours and hours and hours it's gonna be a little bit diff difficult to get like a different sound in your mind if it turns out that this was actually not what they had in mind yeah so if you're a little bit still like early enough in that process and just kind of be like hey let me know what you think of this um, that can actually be super helpful as a mix engineer, you know. Yeah, but yeah, it's eighty percent is about where I want to be. It's true. Like the longer you work on the on the on the mix, the harder it is to start over and kind of get that mm -hmm. fresh perspective. It's like even like if yeah. you want to start over on like on like on a mix, you're like, well, I the drums are good. I'm just not so happy with the vocals. So let me keep the drums and just, like, and then you're just like in these like weird patterns yeah. and loops of like trying to fix something else. And yeah. uh, it's it's hard to get that deep in, you know, and then and then fully refresh, so to speak. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I have done it a couple times, but I prefer not to, you know, <laughs> if it's if it's at all possible to to avoid that, then absolutely. Yeah. And this is a much more collaborative way of mixing anyway. Like, I, I don't want to feel like like I'm the one in charge or something like that, you know, unless right. an artist specifically asks me like, hey, I have no idea what to do with this song. Please, you have complete and full creative freedom. Please do whatever you feel like doing. And then it's a different approach, of course. But, you know, most of the time it's not like that. Totally. And so you were going to say like, when is a song done? Uh, what's yeah. <laughs> that? I'm curious to hear what you what you have to say about that. Like that wasn't even my yeah my full question. I was but thinking I, but about I like that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that, and I was asked this question. I don't remember by whom, but might have been one of my students. Yeah, when is a song? When is a mix done? I think for me, the main thing that I look for is I can listen to it start to finish, and nothing bothers me. When, you know, sometimes I'll just, I'll be listening to like the first verse, chorus, maybe second verse. And I'm like, oh, I got to do this and this and this, you know, and I listen to something I'm like, oh, I should put this or I should uh, change that. I should, I don't know, do like a fader ride or I don't know what. And if I can listen to it front to back without something giving me some kind of impulse to change or adjust something, then I feel like, okay. This is uh, this is where I'm at now. So yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I guess when nothing bothers me. <laughs> yeah, because we're reacting to the mix, and then yeah. we're we're making those adjustments as we hear the issues until yeah. there's no more problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And those adjustments that you want to make are also going to be like something that might distract a listener, although a listener wouldn't necessarily know why it's distracting or why they are losing interest in the song, why they start looking on their phone. And start doing something else, you know? Right. Um, and as a mixer, you can kind of like pick up on what it is that's actually lacking, that's kind of missing. So, so yeah, I guess like if nothing is distracting, if nothing is bothering me, then that's, yeah, pretty much a sign of saying like, okay, we're done. <laughs> we we did this. So, so walk yeah. <laughs> me through a, a little bit more in detail your, your, your mixing, you know, how you're mixing. I'm assuming you're maybe in the box, maybe you're hybrid. Something like that. I mean, I'm completely in the box. Yeah. yeah. How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, too. So that's just, yeah, it's, it's just a way to go for me. It's, um, 
it's the way that I've always worked and um, 